Oh, what up family? So, I know y'all saw the title of today's video. Was it a mistake? Do I regret that I bought the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Now, I've had this phone for a little over six months now. In this video, we're gonna break down the build quality from a wear and tear perspective because as you guys can see right here, man, I've been rocking this for six months straight with no case on it. Yes, you can call me a rebel. I'm out here. Who's out here with me? No case life. You know, nobody. Like nobody, y'all just gonna leave me on the island by myself? I see how it is. <laughs> we also gonna talk about the battery life, which is a huge weight on if this phone to me is good or not, as well as software and performance, camera quality over time, as well as updates and overall value for the money that I spent and if it was worth buying after six months of straight use. Before we actually get into all of that, y'all already know what to do, what we do over here. Comment down below right now, man, how many likes is on this video at the time you guys are watching it and uh, you know, that way we can run these video views up hit that like button and run these views up let's go let's get it <laughs> all right y'all so no more waiting do i regret buying the galaxy s22 ultra after having it for over six months i would say yes and then I will also say no. But first, let's go ahead and break down the build quality and how it actually handles from a wear and tear perspective with me not actually wearing a case on it, as you guys can see right here. I don't put a case on mine because I want you guys to actually see how durable this phone can be if you guys were to buy it yourself. So for a six month time frame with no case on it, man, I do have some scratches on the back of this phone, mainly from sitting it down, you know, just kind of like this, like I sit it down on hard surfaces like this table here. Now looking at the cameras here on the back, these these are also solid as well as I don't have a single scratch on them which is good because I don't have to really worry about you know if my photos are gonna have like this huge scratch going across it or videos are gonna have a scratch going across it anything like that now also from the size of it I don't have any scratches on the side now I do have one here in the corner I don't know if you guys can see it but I do have one right here in the top right corner uh, of it from when I dropped it one time but on the bottom here bottom is still smooth uh, as well and then if we take a quick look at the S Pen S Pen is still good and intact as well so everything as far as the build quality on this y'all I feel like it's really solid when it comes to the build quality other than just you know just the kind of random wear and tear scratches of me sitting it down on hard surfaces now looking at the screen y'all the screen I would have to say is solid y'all definitely one of the most doable screens that I've personally ever experienced on a smartphone now I'm primarily an iPhone user as my main device uh, and I can tell you guys straight up man in this video the Galaxy S22 Ultra screen is way more doable than the iPhone screen and that is a fact so if you guys are wondering if this is a doable phone to me I would say the answer is yes and I'll probably give it a good 9 out of 10 for sure for durability now speaking of good quality I have to talk about the battery life of the S22 Ultra. Now, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. The king of battery life to me when it comes to a smartphone is hands down the iPhone 13 Pro. I feel like the battery life on that phone is just insane. But if I had to choose a close second, and I mean a very, very close second, I'm gonna go no doubt the S22 Ultra and that's over the Pixel 6 Pro as well. I can easily feel comfortable y'all leaving my house without having to go, without having to worry about if I got a cable or an external battery bank with me. Even though everywhere I go, usually if I'm at work or I'm at home or whatever I'm at in my car, family members house, anything like that, I always make sure that I have some means to be able to charge everywhere I go. It's more of a habit, but I honestly find myself nine times out of 10 not even having to use it because the battery life on this phone y'all is so solid that I don't really have to use it now to give it context on how I actually use my phone I use it for watching like YouTube content a lot because for me I like watching a whole lot of podcasts I like watching other creators and different things like that which mine is gonna be coming out here pretty soon so make sure y'all stick around for that because the screen quality to me on this phone for watching content is just so damn good y'all already know Samsung got the best screens in the game that's that's needless to say now I also listen to a lot of music on here because I'm a music head and I feel like the speakers on here is very loud very crisp and most importantly y'all I use it to navigate using Google Maps because let me tell y'all I am terrible at remembering directions to get in places so yes I am that guy that's always mapping out how to get somewhere but all of these things y'all that I mentioned y'all that I use on an everyday basis are heavy tasks outside of just casual social media checking now these tasks are taxing y'all on the battery and I can say that the apps and the phone itself
itself are optimized really well for this phone's battery life. And for me, I give it like an eight and a half out of 10. Now, the next thing we gotta talk about is software and performance. Now, this is where I personally measure how well the phone is able to be able to handle normal phone tasks like answering phone calls, uh, using Google Assistant, opening and closing apps, handling crashes and different things like that. I would be lying. I would be lying if I didn't tell y'all that there has been a handful of times that I've had issues with this phone as far as crashing apps. Now, it's hard for me to necessarily pinpoint if this phone, if this is a phone software issue or if it's an issue with the app companies itself. Now, I'll go ahead and let y'all decide that if you want to, but sometimes whenever I'm opening apps like Instagram or Twitter, I will get just like random occasional app crashes, even sometimes opening just like my web browser. Now it's not all the time to where I can pinpoint to where it's annoying or anything like that, but it is something that has happened a couple times in the past and I felt like I should mention it in this video. But when it actually comes to smoothness as well as quickness of launching and navigating apps and features on this device, it's just extremely smooth, y'all. I feel like you guys are gonna have a good experience when it comes to that. And if you guys are somebody like me and you have other products that are within the ecosystem, like something like the Galaxy Watch 4 or the Watch 4 Classic and the upcoming Galaxy Watch 5 and the 5 Pro, the integration, y'all, of being able to display things from your phone to your watch or to your watch to your phone is seamless, y'all. Like I just talked about it in my previous video, right? And major shout out to y'all, man, for running the video views up on that video. Shout out to y'all, I see you. Now I use the sleep tracking feature way more than I actually thought I would and some of the other health features as far as the benefits of this watch and being able to easily y'all track it uh, on my watch and then transfer it to my phone and then open it right up is super clutch y'all because I can just easily send that data to a doctor or I can send it to my wife or whoever I want to actually share that data with way easier on the phone and I felt like Samsung got it right when it comes to the S22 Ultra but there's still something there's still something with this phone y'all that kind of makes me regret it that we'll get to here in a quick second but first thing I want to talk about before we get to that is the camera in itself we got to talk about the camera quality and how well that's actually held up over time for me now to me this is where I feel Samsung looks loses a lot of points if you ask me. Now, my perspective is coming from someone that is a brown skin person. Now, my main gripe with this camera is that it is simply not calibrated for people of color with my skin tone. Like, look, let me, let me just take a quick photo so y'all can see what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna open up the camera here and I'm gonna go ahead and take just like a quick little selfie here. Not the best, but you know, you kind of see it right here. So you can see that it's just not as it's not as punchy. I just don't feel like it really like captured the skin tone too well. Now, as you guys can see right here, I always feel like whenever I'm filming something or I'm taking a photo with this phone, it gets the color of my skin wrong like 85% of the time. Now, I will say in this environment that I'm in right now, the lighting is on point, so it is dependent on the lighting. Now, don't get me wrong. Overall, if I'm actually taking photos of things like plants or something like that, then I do feel like you know, it's gonna get the accuracy and the color uh, right when it comes to something like that. Because as you can see right here, you know, it kind of got that plant right. Overall, if I'm taking photos of trees, plants, buildings, some animals, and just other things like that, besides the selfie, it's a solid camera. So when it comes to the camera for me, y'all, it's just okay. It's not the best on the market, but it is decent enough to still be able to capture what you guys need if you wanna post something on social media, if that's what you guys actually care about, like creating YouTube, TikTok, IG, or other social content is solid for that for sure. Now, I still would recommend the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro camera, uh, as well as the Pixel 6 Pro for photos only over the Galaxy S22 Ultra camera because I feel like it nails my personal skin tone and other surrounding colors better than Samsung in my unbiased opinion. Now, speaking of unbiased opinion, right, the major thing that has me regretting buying this phone right here, and it has to deal with me just getting bored with this phone. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. When I say this, it's a cool phone, and you can, you know, you can update the backgrounds and wallpapers like you guys are seeing right here and you can move your icons around and change them and all of that to customize it to your liking but for one right it's a little bigger than what I would personally prefer these days because when I actually take this phone and I slide it into my pocket it just seems big and just odd and then number two knowing that samsung has other options of phones that i can actually play with like the galaxy z fold 4 which is i guess is another big phone as well as the galaxy z flip 4. now i actually have the z flip 4 as a phone pre-order so i am hyped to actually get that in try it test it out and it's actually going to be my first galaxy z flip phone and i'm going to be seeing if i'm going to be trading this phone in and keeping the z flip 4 over the s22 ultra but again only time is going to tell with that but yeah i just wish that i would have gotten something that 
that's just a little bit more interesting like the flip over the S22 Ultra. And speaking of interesting and a question that I know you all probably want to know and that is, is this phone's overall value for the money worth what I actually spent on this phone? I would say this, right? To a certain degree, yes. I think overall, y'all, Samsung did a great job with this phone with basically giving us the note that, you know, we kind of missed out on uh, the prior year. But I have to be true and be honest with y'all and say that I'm personally just not a fan of the camera on this phone. And it's kind of a deal breaker for me as I'm someone who does use their phone a whole lot to be able to capture things like photos, uh, videos to be able to create content with that may include myself in it. And it's just not calibrated, I feel, properly for everyone. And I'm I'm going to keep saying that as I know there are a lot of brown skin people out there that feel the exact same way and I feel somebody has to be the one to actually speak up for us until they actually take it into consideration when it actually comes to their smartphone camera tech so I'm actually hoping that the Galaxy Z Flip 4 will do a better job at this as far as inclusion when it comes to the cameras than they have in the past but if you guys are someone that is not a person of color then I feel this camera is going to be fine for you also when it actually comes to viewing content on this screen y'all it is solid battery life on this phone it is solid software and performance other than you know the little random crashes that i mentioned uh, a little earlier it seems snappy it seems snappy fast solid for the most part as well as when it comes to updates i feel that samsung has given us a decent amount of updates to fix you know little small issues over the past six months which is a good thing because one thing that lets you know is that they're still monitoring as well as making the experience for the end user like us good for the long haul so yeah i would say if you guys are looking for a new device or you just want to go ahead and upgrade to something i would say the galaxy s22 ultra will be a great option for you guys to scoop up especially around this time because you can at least get those discounted rates that we all know these phones go down to so that you can save a couple coins some ducats some shillings some skrillin <laughs> all right so i've also had this galaxy watch 4 that i gotta talk about with y'all for over a year now if you want to find out what i was wrong about when it comes to this watch right here and it is a big big major deal then go ahead and check out this video that is right up here on the screen now and like always man continue to make your moves and always remember your why i'll see y'all in the next one Squad. <laughs>